Greetings, AP Chemistry students. Today, I want to go over a little bit of a refresher of some equilibrium stuff, cover a few things we haven't done yet, work through a couple of examples with you, uh, just to make sure that we feel okay with solving some equilibrium problems. Uh, next week, we're gonna learn a few new things as we wrap up uh, unit seven, but these same concepts will appear in unit eight. So it's really important that we get everything down. And it also relates to some things we'll talk about in unit nine. Equilibrium is the essentially the foundation of everything we're gonna be doing from here until the end of the semester. So we need to make sure that we uh, get a pretty good grasp of this. So we talked already about the reaction quotient Q and what that has to do with shifts in equilibrium. So I wanna go back to this uh, solving equilibrium problems uh, slide about the general process. So you write your balanced equation, you write an equilibrium expression, you make an ice chart with initial concentrations or pressures. Uh, you don't put moles, you put molarities or pressures if you're doing KP in an ice chart. Then if you're not sure which way equilibrium would shift, you then need to calculate Q to figure out which direction everything's going to go. Um, that way you can figure out, well, are we shifting towards the reactant side or are we shifting towards the product side? You write the change in terms of X, you solve for X and you calculate the equilibrium concentrations. So let's take a look at a sample problem here. I have HCN plus water makes H3O plus plus CN minus. Now, if you are looking ahead, this is actually an acid base problem. So technically we're doing a unit eight calculation, but that's all right. It, everything works the same way. So it says if one mole of HCN is in one liter of solution, what is the cyanide concentration at equilibrium. So we have our reaction. We need an equilibrium expression. That's going to say that K equals the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of CN minus divided by the concentration of HCN. All of our coefficients happen to be ones and water is a liquid. So we're going to ignore it. We set up an ice chart. Since water is a liquid, we're going to just ignore it in our ice chart because its concentration is not going to change. So if we have one mole of HCN and one liter of solution, that's a one molar solution. These are starting at zero. So because those are starting at zero, if we calculated Q, Q right now is zero. So this reaction has to shift towards the product side. It has to. You can't run this reaction backwards. We can't uh, subtract X here because that would send us into negative amounts. So these are going, let me draw this a little bit better. These are going up by X while this is going down by X. So at equilibrium, this is one minus X. This is X and this is X. So now we plug these, all the numbers into our equilibrium expression. We have 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10th equals, we've got X times X over one minus X. Now, this is a case where our equilibrium constant is very small. So when that's the case, we're gonna implement what's called the 5% rule. If our value of K is relatively small, then the change in initial reaction concentrations can be ignored as long as that change is less than 5%. This avoids the use of complex algebra and it saves time. And the AP exam expects us to use this approximation. So if we take a look at this, otherwise solving this equation could be a little bit complex. It would involve the quadratic equation. But since this is not going to go very far towards the product side because this constant is very small, then right here where we have one minus X, X is small. So one minus X is approximately one in this case. So then 
6.2 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x squared over 1. So x equals, if we solve this, it's just going to be the square root of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10th, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative. Let's see, I should be using, uh, yeah, two significant figures is great. 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that happens to be X, which is our CN value. So it's 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And by the way, if we do the math here, and we'd say 1 minus 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, my calculator says that this right here, the one minus X is 0.9999745, which if we round that off to two or three significant figures becomes 1.00. So I think that this approximation is pretty good. This 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth is less than 5% of one. So we can ignore that change. So that's the 5% rule. Uh, what you need to show when solving a math problem like this is you need to actually write out that X is small and then cross it out when you're adding or subtracting it to or from something. So don't just do it and just not show that you're actually saying that X is small. You need to actually put that out there. Then part B says, given the following initial conditions, um, Will the cyanide concentration increase, decrease, or remain the same at equilibrium? So to do this, we need to calculate Q in order to figure out which direction this reaction is going to shift. And so Q equals, we're going to take the concentrations of our products. That's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the minus fourth times 1.3 times 10 to the negative third divided by uh, 1.3 times 10 to the negative second. And let's see what that equals. And this equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is a small number, but Q compared to K Q is greater than K, so it will shift to the left, and the concentration of cyanide will decrease as we approach equilibrium, right? So under these conditions, the reaction would actually shift to the left. I do want to point out real quick that in this problem, yes, I used H plus down here instead of H3O plus. Uh, those are really the same thing. Sorry if that caused any confusion there. All right, so now we're going to look at another problem, which says when solid ammonium chloride is heated, it decomposes according to this reaction. The value of Kp for the reaction is 0.0792 at 575 kelvins. 10 grams of solid ammonium chloride is placed in a rigid evacuated three liter container that's sealed and heated to 575 kelvins. I do want to point out real quick that when we refer to a rigid evacuated container, what that means is it's a container that its volume is fixed. And when we say it's evacuated, that means that there is nothing in it. All the air has been pumped out. So it's we've drawn a vacuum on the container and just added the 10 grams of ammonium chloride. The system comes to equilibrium with some solid ammonium chloride remaining. That's important because if all the ammonium chloride had turned into a gas, then we're not really at equilibrium. That means that this reaction made all the products and there's not an equilibrium position. It says write the expression for the equilibrium constant for the reaction in terms of partial pressures, Kp. So that part should be fairly straightforward. Kp equals... What's well, going to equal the partial pressure of NH3 times 
the partial pressure of HCl. And ammonium chloride is a solid, so we leave it out of the expression. Now, if you instead put square brackets around NH3 and HCl instead of using the partial pressures, that would be considered wrong in this case because for Kp, we need to use uh, partial pressures. Then it says calculate the partial pressure of NH3 in atmospheres at equilibrium. So for that, we need an ice chart. Now, ammonium chloride is a solid, so we're going to ignore it in our ice chart. And the amount of ammonia and HCl we started with are both zero. This reaction has to shift to the product side because we don't have any products, so it's going to go up by x, up by x. And so at equilibrium, we have x and x. If we plug in those values plus our value of Kp into the expression, we get that 0 0.0792 equals x times x, also known as x squared. So x equals the square root of 0 0.0792, which is uh, 0 0.281. Which would be the partial pressure of each of those. Then it says a small amount of NH3 is injected into the equilibrium mixture. As new equilibrium is established, does the amount of ammonium chloride in the container increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, if we were to calculate Q, we were already at equilibrium. Q is going to be larger than K because the partial pressure of ammonia is now too high. Or if you want to think about it from a kinetic standpoint, by increasing the amount of ammonia present, we have increased the rate of the reverse reaction, which has disrupted our equilibrium position. And so this reaction is going to shift to the reactant side, um, causing the amount of ammonium chloride to increase. So we could say that Q is greater than K, so it would shift left. Or you could say that increasing the concentration of ammonia increased the rate of the reverse reaction, so the amount of ammonium chloride would increase. Uh, then it says, as after the new equilibrium is established, at 575 kelvins is the value of kp greater than less than or equal to the value before it was injected into the container justify your answer and the value of kp should be equal simply because kp is an equilibrium constant it doesn't change just because we change some concentrations. The only way to change K is to change temperature, just like in a kinetics equation. If you change temperature, you change the equilibrium constant. Or if you change the whole reaction, if you do a different reaction, obviously it has a different value of K. So K is unchanged because the equilibrium constant only changes with temperature. We're not going to worry about part D for this reaction today. Uh, we'll get to that next week. So I hope this helps a little bit with your understanding of some equilibrium. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and otherwise, I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend.